Official Galactic Historical Record, date 7249.3 Standard Galactic Time. Note translated from High Galactic to Human English with appropriate cultural references. The Galactic Council of Advanced Species Headquarters was exactly what you'd expect from a civilization that had mastered faster than light travel, conquered death, and still couldn't figure out how to make a decent cup of coffee. The building itself was a perfect geometric impossibility, all gleaming spires and gravity-defying architecture that seemed to exist in 17 dimensions at once. You know, the usual look how advanced we are architectural flexing that every advanced civilization seems compelled to do. Dr. Zix Nax stood before the assembled council, their three primary brain lobes pulsing with what could only be described as smug satisfaction. As the galaxy's foremost creator of theoretical puzzles and practical conundrums, they had earned the right to that smugness. After all, their latest creation, the impossible maze, had successfully stumped every attempted solution for the past three centuries. Esteemed members of the Council Zixnax began, their voice modulator expertly calibrated to project both authority and condescension. I stand before you today to celebrate another century of absolute failure. They paused for effect, all seven of their eyes blinking in sequence. The impossible maze remains, as ever, impossible. The assembled aliens representing the 47 most advanced species in the known galaxy shifted uncomfortably in their anti-gravity seats. The maze's holographic representation floated above the central platform, its quantum mechanical structure shimmering with possibilities that seemed to exist and not exist simultaneously. It was beautiful, in the same way a black hole is beautiful right before it tears you into your constituent atoms. Let us review the statistics Zyxnax continued clearly enjoying themselves. The hyperlogical consortium of Rigel 7 spent 40 years attempting to brute force a solution, only to discover they'd been solving their own simulation of the puzzle instead of the actual puzzle. The quantum consciousness collective of Betelgos tried to merge their minds with the puzzle itself and ended up accidentally inventing a new form of interpretive dance. A helpful holographic display showed a montage of various alien species facing the puzzle, each failure more spectacular than the last. The mechanoids of Tau Ceti had literally rusted in place, trying to compute all possible solutions. The energy beings of the Horsehead Nebula had somehow tied themselves into a pretzel shape that shouldn't have been possible for non-corporeal entities. Three hundred years, Zixnax concluded, their satisfaction reaching dangerous levels. Three hundred years, forty-seven species, and eight million, three hundred and forty-two thousand, nine hundred and seventeen attempts. The closest anyone has come to solving it was the Silicon Sages of Andromeda. And they only managed to solve the outer shell before their entire civilization decided to take up hydroponics instead. The council chambers filled with the kind of uncomfortable silence that usually preceded either a groundbreaking scientific discovery or someone ordering takeout from that news restaurant that nobody was quite sure actually existed in this dimension. Little did Dr. Zixnax know that their perfect record was about to be challenged by a species that had only recently figured out that throwing hot beans in water made a pretty decent breakfast drink. The humans were coming, and they'd just had their morning coffee. The doors to the council chamber hissed open with the dramatic flair of a teenager making an entrance at their first high school dance. In walked, or more accurately, stumbled humanity's finest representative's doctor. Maya Patel, quantum physicist, and holder of the Earth record for most energy drinks consumed while solving Schrodinger's cat paradox. And Commander Jack O'Neill, Space Force strategist, whose claim to fame was reorganizing the entire Sol defense fleet because it looked kind of messy on the star chart. Sorry we're late, Maya announced, juggling what appeared to be 17 different data pads and a thermos that emitted an aroma that made several telepathic species in the room wince. The quantum elevator kept putting us on all floors simultaneously. We had to take the stairs. Jack followed, looking about as comfortable in his diplomatic uniform as a penguin in a sauna. Nice place you got here. Very, pointy he gestured vaguely at the crystalline architecture. Do you guys have a gift shop? The assembled alien dignitaries stared in what could only be described as horror fascination, the kind usually reserved for watching someone eat a sandwich that had clearly been under the couch for several weeks. Dr. Zix Nax's seven eyes performed an impressive synchronized role. These are the humans the Grand Arbiter of the Council managed to make the words sound like something you'd scrape off your boot after a long walk through a questionable neighborhood. Yep, that's us Maya chirped, 
finally managing to corral her data pads into something resembling order. Earth's finest puzzle solvers. Well, technically second finest. Our first choice was this kid who can solve a Rubik's Cube in seven seconds, but he had soccer practice. The puzzle room itself was a marvel of engineering, assuming you were impressed by the kind of engineering that made Einstein's theories look like fingerprinting. The walls rippled with quantum probability fields, the floor was a literal slice of space-time, and the ceiling. Well, no one was quite sure if there was a ceiling, or if the room just sort of forgot to end. In the center floated the holographic interface of the impossible maze. It twisted through dimensions that shouldn't exist, making shapes that would give MC. Escher a headache. Now then Dr. Zixnax began, their voice dripping with the kind of condescension usually reserved for explaining rocket science to a potato, the puzzle operates on principles of quantum mechanical. Oh neat, it's like a 4D Rubik's Cube mixed with my aunt's crochet patterns Maya interrupted, already circling the hologram. Jack, doesn't this remind you of that time we had to figure out the office printer network? Jack squinted at the impossibly complex display. Kinda except the printer actually worked sometimes. Several members of the council exchanged worried glances. The high theorist of the Volpexi Dominion leaned over to their colleague and whispered, they do realize this is the most complex puzzle in galactic history, not a human entertainment cube. Perhaps we should explain the basic concepts first Dr. Zixnax suggested, speaking very slowly as if addressing particularly dense neutron stars. The fundamental principles of quantum entanglement. Yeah, yeah, quantum superposition, probability matrices, non-linear causality chains Maya waved dismissively, already pulling out what appeared to be a battered notebook covered in coffee stains. Standard stuff. But has anyone tried poking it? The silence that followed was so profound that several species evolved the ability to hear just to appreciate it. Poking. It Dr. Zixnax's voice modulator actually cracked. Sure, Maya grinned, already reaching for the hologram. Sometimes you gotta treat quantum mechanics like a vending machine, give it a good shake, and see what falls out. The council collectively held their breath those who had breath to hold anyway. Humanity's approach to the galaxy's greatest puzzle was about to begin, and it looked suspiciously like their approach to everything else with reckless enthusiasm and questionable methodology. Maya Patel's first official action as humanity's representative to the greatest puzzle in galactic history was to pull out a battered thermos and chug what appeared to be enough caffeine to give a small elephant cardiac arrest. Right, she said, her left eye twitching slightly. Let's science this bad boy. The council watched in mounting horror as she proceeded to spread out her collection of data pads across the quantum stable floor in what appeared to be a completely random pattern. Several of the more mathematically inclined species began to develop stress-induced molecular instability. Dr. Patel, Dr. Zixnax ventured, their voice strained. What exactly are you? Shesh Maya held up a finger without looking up. I'm procrastinating. You're what? Procrastinating. It's a vital part of human problem-solving methodology, she gestured to Jack, who had pulled out his own data pad and appeared to be playing something called Tetris. See? Jack's already started started what the Grand Arbiter demanded. Not solving the puzzle, Jack replied, his fingers moving rapidly across the screen. You see, humans have discovered that the best way to solve a complex problem is to actively avoid solving it while your subconscious does all the heavy lifting. I call it tactical procrastination. Maya suddenly sat bolt upright, her eyes wide. Holy quantum fluctuations, Jack. Look at this thing. Doesn't it remind you of something? Jack paused his game and squinted at the holographic maze. Now that you mention it, kinda looks like that old game. What was it called? The one with the impossible architecture and non-Euclidean geometry. Portal Maya exclaimed, practically vibrating with excitement though that might have been the caffeine. It's like Portal mixed with Monument Valley and a dash of that weird dream I had after eating expired curry. Several council members consulted their universal translators, convinced they must be malfunctioning. Surely these humans weren't comparing the most sophisticated puzzle in known space to. Entertainment software. And look at these quantum pathways Maya continued. Now circling the hologram like a caffeinated shark. They're practically identical to optimal pizza delivery routes in Manhattan during rush hour. Jack set down his data pad, suddenly interested. You know you're right. And if you look at it from this angle he walked around to the other side, tilting his head. 
It's exactly like trying to organize the parking schedule for the Space Force fleet when half the ships exist in probability space and the other half are stuck in temporal traffic. The quantum entanglement matrices Dr. Zix Nax tried to interject is are just like trying to figure out who borrowed whose Netflix password Maya snapped her fingers. It's all connected. Jack, remember that time you reorganized the Seoul Defense Fleet? Using the same algorithm that food delivery apps use to optimize multiple deliveries during a Super Bowl game, Jack grinned. Already on it. The two humans huddled over their data pads, occasionally shouting things that made absolutely no sense to the increasingly concerned council. If we treat each quantum state like a pizza topping preference and map the probability fields using rush hour traffic patterns, then apply the same logic we use for organizing multiplayer gaming servers during a major release, combined with the protocol for determining whose turn it is to buy coffee in the office. The high theorist of the Volpexi Dominion leaned over to Dr. Zixnax and whispered, should we stop them? They appear to be solving a completely different problem. Dr. Zixnax's seven eyes were rapidly scanning between their own calculations and the human's chaotic workspace. I, I'm not entirely sure what they're solving anymore. Maya had now taped several of her data pads together to create what she called a quantum whiteboard, but looked suspiciously like a collection of memes and coffee stains. Jack had somehow incorporated his Tetris game into their calculations, insisting that falling block patterns are crucial to understanding dimensional topology. Also, Maya added, pulling out yet another thermos, where was she keeping them all? We're going to need snacks. Complex problem solving requires precise blood sugar levels and at least three different kinds of junk food. This is completely unprecedented, the Grand Arbiter sputtered. In 300 years, no species has ever attempted to solve the impossible maze using, using, pizza delivery algorithms and video game logic Jack supplied helpfully. Yeah, that's kind of our thing. Did you know we once solved a major astronomical calculation by comparing it to fantasy football statistics? Maya, now surrounded by empty caffeine containers and crumpled snack wrappers, looked up with the kind of manic grin that usually preceded either a brilliant discovery or a minor explosion. Hey, has anyone ever tried treating this quantum maze like a social media network trying to decide which cat video to show you next? The silence that followed was broken only by the sound of Dr. Zix Nax's probability calculator quietly weeping. Three hours into what the council was now referring to as the human incident, the atmosphere in the puzzle room had evolved from dignified skepticism to barely contained panic. Maya and Jack had transformed the pristine quantum testing chamber into something that looked like a cross between a college dorm during finals week and the aftermath of a caffeine explosion. It did. Did that human just solve the temporal paradox matrix by comparing it to her Netflix queue, the high theorist whispered, their tentacles curling in distress. Indeed, Maya was making the kind of progress that shouldn't have been possible, especially while simultaneously watching cat videos on one data pad and online shopping on another. The holographic interface of the impossible maze was responding to her apparently random inputs in ways that made several quantum mathematicians need to lie down. You see. Maya explained to the increasingly horrified audience, gesturing with her seventh energy drink of the day, quantum superposition is basically just like trying to merge onto the I-95 during rush hour. You exist in multiple states simultaneously wanting to murder everyone, contemplating a career change, and wondering if you can make that gap between the semi-truck and the minivan. Dr. Zix Nax's eye stalks were twitching violently. That's not, that's not how quantum mechanics works. Oh, really, Maya raised an eyebrow. Have you ever tried to get from Brooklyn to Manhattan during peak traffic? Tell me that's not a quantum phenomenon. You're simultaneously late, on time, and giving up on life altogether until someone actually observes you. Meanwhile, Jack had taken a more practical approach to one particularly troublesome section of the maze. He'd arranged several snack wrappers on the floor in a pattern that eerily mirrored the quantum probability fields. See, this reminds me of when I had to reorganize my garage, he explained to a group of bewildered alien scientists. You've got your quantum uncertainties here. He moved a candy wrapper, which are like those boxes that might contain Christmas decorations or might contain that thing I borrowed from my neighbor three years ago. You don't know until you open them, and even then, you're not really sure. But the quantum resonance cascades one scientist began are exactly like trying to find the right screwdriver, Jack exclaimed. You know it exists, you've seen it recently 
but it's somehow in every drawer and no drawer simultaneously until you really need it. Then it's definitely in the last place you look. The council watched in mounting horror as the humans continued to make progress using what they termed chaotic efficiency Maya had somehow synchronized the maze's quantum fluctuations with her playlist shuffle algorithm, while Jack was applying what he called the where did I leave my keys principle to multidimensional mapping. The quantum entanglement patterns are responding muttered one of the junior scientists, checking their instruments. They're actually stabilizing. Maya nodded enthusiastically, now typing with one hand, while using the other to demonstrate what she called the New York pedestrian probability field. Of course they are. Quantum particles are just like tourists in Times Square. They don't know where they're going. They're affecting each other's paths, and they're probably lost. The breakthrough moment, when it came, was so perfectly human that several alien species would later refuse to believe it wasn't choreographed. Maya, in her caffeine-fueled enthusiasm, gesticulated a bit too wildly with her latest energy drink. The container went flying, describing a perfect parabolic arc through the air. Time seemed to slow as various species watched in horror as the liquid headed straight for the holographic interface's main control panel. No Dr. Zixnax's seven eyes widened in unified terror. That panel contains the primary quantum. The drink splashed across the controls, creating what could only be described as a quantum short circuit. Sparks flew, probability fields fluctuated, and for a brief moment, everyone in the room existed in a superposition of panic and resignation. Jack, displaying the lightning-fast reflexes of someone used to saving their laptop from coffee spills, dove for the panel. In his rush, he slipped on one of his own snack wrappers, somehow managing to hit exactly seven buttons with various parts of his body as he went down. The impossible happened. The maze's holographic display flickered, shifted, and suddenly solved itself. The quantum pathways aligned perfectly, probability fields stabilized, and the entire puzzle resolved into a configuration so elegant it brought tears to several mathematical eyes. Silence fell over the chamber. Maya, still frozen in her drink-throwing pose, blinked. Ha! Huh. That worked better than expected. Kid, did you plan this? Dr. Zixnax demanded, their voice modulator hitting frequencies it wasn't designed for. To plan what Jack asked from his position on the floor. The falling part or the solving part? Because I've got to be honest, I'm not sure which parts of me hit which buttons. But the quantum resonance cascades sputtered a scientist. The probability matrices. The dimensional interface protocols. Maya was already reviewing the solution on her data pad, nodding thoughtfully. Oh, I see what happened. The spilled drink created a random input pattern that perfectly mimicked the chaos theory of a Monday morning commute. And when Jack fell, he basically performed the physical equivalent of button mashing, which, as any gamer knows, works surprisingly often. Button. Mashing the Grand Arbiter seemed to be having trouble with the concept. Yeah, you know, when you don't know which button does what, so you hit all of them and hope for the best Jack had managed to get up and was brushing snack dust off his uniform. It's a legitimate strategy. Got me through half of college. The council erupted into chaos. Several species began arguing in frequencies only dogs could hear. A few of the more rigid logical thinkers had to be escorted out after beginning to glitch. Dr. Zixnax was staring at their life's work, now solved by what amounted to a caffeinated accident. But you can't just. You can't just solve it by spilling things and falling down, they protested. Why not, Maya asked, genuinely curious. Some of humanity's greatest discoveries happened exactly that way. Penicillin? Mold accident. Chocolate chip cookies. Baking mishap. The microwave. Melted candy bar. We've practically built our entire civilization on oops. That worked. Jack nodded sagely. You know how many times the Space Force had to rewrite protocols because someone accidentally found a better way to do something while trying to figure out how to heat up their lunch in the quantum drive room. A junior scientist who had been analyzing the solution spoke up hesitantly. But, but the math checks out. The solution is elegant, efficient, and they swallowed hard, dot, 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 completely repeatable. They actually solved it. Maya beamed. Of course we did. Once you realize that quantum mechanics is just upper-level traffic management with better math, it all makes sense. And really, after you've tried to coordinate a group chat to decide where to get lunch, managing quantum probability fields is pretty straightforward. I feel like I should be taking notes, Jack mused, looking at the solved puzzle. 
This reminds me of that time I finally organized my streaming service watch list by creating a probability field of what I might want to watch based on how much sleep I got and whether Mercury was in retrograde. Dr. Zix Nax had finally found their voice again. 300 years. 300 years of the finest minds in the galaxy applying the most advanced theoretical frameworks, and you solved it with. The caffeine, procrastination, and what we like to call controlled chaos theory Maya supplied helpfully. Yeah, that tracks. You guys overthought it. Sometimes you need to stop trying to understand the quantum uncertainty and just embrace being uncertain. Any human trying to plan a birthday party could have told you that. The room was still trying to process this when Maya suddenly brightened. Oh, this reminds me of this great pizza place back in New York. Anyone want to order lunch? I can explain how their delivery optimization algorithm could probably solve faster than light travel while we eat. Several council members fainted. Dr. Zig Snacks looked like they were seriously considering a career change. And somewhere, in the vast quantum probability fields that made up reality, the universe itself seemed to chuckle at the sheer audacity of solving its most complex puzzle through what amounted to a series of fortunate accidents. Just another day in human problem solving. In the aftermath of what was now being called the Great Human Quantum Kerfuffle, the Council had assembled an emergency session to understand exactly how their most complex puzzle had been solved by what appeared to be a caffeine-powered accident. The chamber was packed with the galaxy's finest minds, all eager to understand how their carefully constructed theories had been upended by humans, essentially treating quantum mechanics like a game of cosmic Jenga. Dr. Zixnax stood before the assembled species, their dignity somewhat dented, but their scientific curiosity peaked. After extensive analysis of the unusual solution method, we have made several disturbing discoveries. Maya, still nursing what had to be her 15th energy drink, interrupted cheerfully. Oh, you mean how we solved it by thinking outside the Tesseract? That's not a real scientific term, Dr. Zixnax bristled. Neither is yeet, but that didn't stop us from using it to describe the trajectory of that energy drink that helped solve your puzzle, Jack pointed out helpfully. The Grand Arbiter raised all three of their appendages for silence. Please, Dr. Zixnax, continue with your findings. Yes, well. They consulted their notes. It appears that the human success stems from their completely illogical approach to logical problems. Their neural pathways, which we previously considered primitive and inefficient, actually allow them to make connections that our more advanced brains would automatically dismiss as absurd. Like comparing quantum entanglement to trying to untangle Christmas lights, Maya suggested. Precisely, Dr. Zix Nax admitted reluctantly. While we spent centuries developing complex theoretical frameworks, humans simply fumbled their way through using analogies to their chaotic daily lives. A holographic display showed the human solution pathway, which looked suspiciously like a subway map drawn by a sugar rushed kindergartner. Next to it, the traditional alien approach appeared as an elegant, but ultimately unsuccessful series of logical progressions, you see. Maya explained, standing up and immediately knocking over three empty energy drink containers, you guys tried to solve chaos with order. We humans have learned to fight chaos with chaos. It's like trying to clean your room, the more you try to organize it perfectly, the more impossible it becomes. Sometimes you need to embrace the mess and just shove everything under the bed. That's not how advanced physics works, protested a member of the Hyperlogical Consortium. Isn't it, though, Jack countered? Look at quantum particles. They're basically like my socks the moment you try to know both where they are and where they're going. They spite you by being somewhere else entirely. Dr. Zixnax's analysis continued, their voice carrying a mix of horror and fascination. Further study of Earth's environment reveals that humans evolved in conditions that practically mirror quantum uncertainty principles. Their weather is chaotic, their social systems are unpredictable, and their traffic patterns defy all known laws of physics. Don't forget about our cooking methods, Maya added. We invented molecular gastronomy by accident, because someone wondered what would happen if they used liquid nitrogen to make ice cream. Precisely, Dr. Zix Nax exclaimed. Your species doesn't just tolerate chaos, you thrive in it. While we were trying to impose order on quantum mechanics, you were essentially speaking its native language. A language of chaos, confusion and, what did you call it? Winging it, Jack supplied. It's like when you're cooking and you don't have the right ingredients, so you substitute coffee for water and hope for the best. Sometimes you create a disaster and sometimes you accidentally solve the most complex puzzle in galactic history. 
The council chamber erupted in murmurs as species across the galaxy began to reconsider their approach to problem solving. Several members were already taking notes on human methods, though throw energy drink at it was perhaps being taken too literally by some of the more enthusiastic researchers. So you're saying the Grand Arbiter summarized that humans solved in an afternoon what we couldn't solve in three centuries because they're... What exactly? Maya grinned. Because we're used to living in a universe that makes no sense. When nothing makes sense, everything makes sense. It's like trying to understand why cats knock things off tables the moment you stop trying to find logic in it. You understand it perfectly. Dr. Zixnax's seven eyes blinked in sequence as they delivered their final conclusion. The humans didn't solve the puzzle, despite their chaotic nature. They solved it because of it. Their primitive, caffeine-addled, chaos-embracing minds were, in fact, perfectly suited for quantum problem-solving. The silence that followed was broken only by the sound of Maya opening another energy drink and Jack muttering something about how this reminded him of trying to understand his phone's autocorrect algorithm. The galaxy would never be the same. Chaos, it seemed, had won and it was wearing a human face and carrying a thermos of coffee. The Galactic News Network's headline said it all humans solve impossible puzzle with spilled drink and snack wrappers galaxy questions everything the subheading was equally dramatic leading scientists consider adding caffeine to their diets. The footage of Maya and Jack's solution went viral across all 17 dimensions of the quantum internet. Particularly popular was the clip of Jack's stumble and solve moment, which had been remixed into what humans called a meme approximately 47 billion times. The most popular version included something called Yakety Sax playing in the background. Following the unprecedented success of what is now termed the human method, announced the president of the Galactic Academy of Sciences, we are implementing several changes to our educational system. These changes included mandatory coffee breaks during quantum physics exams, a new course titled Productive Procrastination, The Art of Solving Problems by Avoiding Them, the introduction of controlled chaos environments in research laboratories, complete with Earth-imported snack vending machines. A revolutionary new theorem called the Pizza Delivery Principle of Quantum Mathematics. Dr. Zixnax, after spending three weeks in what they called intensive contemplation, but what security footage revealed to be then repeatedly watching Earth sitcoms, emerged with a new perspective. While I still maintain that our traditional methods have merit they announced during a packed press conference, I must acknowledge that perhaps, perhaps we have been thinking too clearly they paused, looking like every word caused them physical pain. Sometimes, it seems, the best way to solve a problem is to not really try to solve it at all. Maya and Jack, meanwhile, had become overnight celebrities. Species across the galaxy were clamoring for their consulting services, leading to the establishment of Earth's newest and most peculiar business venture, Human Solutions, Inc. We'll solve it by accident. Their first major contract involved reorganizing the Arcturus Trading Hub's quantum shipping lanes using a system based entirely on how humans decide where to go for lunch in a group chat. Traffic efficiency improved by 3,000%. The key Maya explained to a classroom of eager alien students is to embrace the chaos. Stop trying to impose order on a universe that clearly treats logic as more of a suggestion than a rule. But how do we know if we're doing it right? asked a confused Regellian. That's the neat part, Jack replied, feet propped up on a quantum stabilized desk. If you know you're doing it right, you're probably doing it wrong. The Galactic Standards Bureau was forced to create an entirely new classification of problem solving methodologies, human chaotic solutions. It was defined as approaches that work for reasons we cannot explain and probably shouldn't question too deeply. Even the Hyperlogical Consortium, after much debate and several existential crises, began ending their meetings with what they called controlled illogical thinking sessions, though they still refused to adopt the human practice of deciding complex mathematical proofs with rock, paper, scissors. As for the impossible maze itself, it was retired to the Galactic Museum of Scientific Achievements, where it stood as a testament to the power of spilled drinks and accidental genius. The plaque beneath it read solved by humans during their lunch break. Sometimes the best solution is no solution at all. Dr. Zixnax's final paper on the subject became required reading across the galaxy. Its title, The Human Factor Why 300 Years of Logic Can't Beat Five Minutes of Chaos. And so, humanity found its place in the galactic community, 
not through superior technology or advanced civilization, but through their unique ability to solve the universe's most complex problems by basically treating them like a game of cosmic improvisation. As Maya put it in her best-selling book Quantum Physics and Pizza Delivery A Human's Guide to the Universe in a Universe Built on Uncertainty Principles, maybe the most logical approach is to be completely illogical. Also, always keep caffeine handy. You never know when you might accidentally solve something. The galaxy would never be the same. But then again, change is just chaos with better PR.